All right, so we're going to continue our discussion of directional derivatives, and we'll do a couple examples so you can see how this theorem we proved in the last video is used to do some calculations. And we'll also look at some of the consequences of this theorem. Uh, they give us a little bit more information telling us exactly what's going on with this directional derivative. So let's start with an example. So here's a, here's a basic one, OK? Compute the derivative of f of xy equals, let's say, x squared y plus e to the xy squared. And let's do that at a point, uh, let's say, 1, 0. In the direction of, so let's do a vector. Let's do the vector uh, 4 and minus 3. <coughs> OK? So. We can apply this theorem, and it's going to be a straightforward calculation, right? So one of the ingredients that we need in the theorem is we need the, the gradient. So let's, let's start with that. First step of our solution is going to be to compute the gradient vector. So the gradient of f, so let's do it first in terms of x and y. So partial with respect to x, we get 2xy plus... So we do the x derivative here, we're going to get y squared e to the x y squared. And now we'll do the partial derivative with respect to y. We're going to get x squared plus 2xy e to the x y squared, right? Uh, this 2xy, of course, coming from the chain rule. You do the derivative of xy squared with respect to y, you get a 2y times the x. That's where the 2xy is coming from. All right. So having done that, you can now evaluate at the point that we were given, so at 1, 0. So let's see. Putting y equal to 0 gives us 0 in the x component. And over here, we're going to have a 1 plus, oh, again, 0. So simply... 0, 1. That's not so bad. <coughs> All right. Uh, next ingredient. Well, there's one thing you've got to be a little bit cautious of, right? Um, you need a unit vector. So we don't have a unit vector yet, so let's construct one. U is going to be 1 over the magnitude of V times V. So 4 squared plus minus 3 squared, that's 25. Square root of 25 gives me 1 over 5, right? Our good old 3, 4, 5 rule. 1 over 5 times 4 and minus 3. And last step is simply to take the dot product of these two vectors. And I'm not going to be, I don't. I don't know that people are all that picky about, okay, should we use u or should we use the original vector v here? Um, some people might say that you should always have a unit vector here. Uh, if you put v instead of u, that's fine. We just have to understand that in the definition, we should always switch to a unit vector before we do the calculation. Um, so if we do the dot product, 0 times 4 goes away. 1 times minus 3 with the 1 over 5 out front gives me minus 3 over 5 for that directional derivative. OK, not so bad, right? <coughs> Let me give you one more example. This one's going to be a little bit trickier. Um, find the derivative of, so let's say, f of x, 
y is equal to, let's see, sine of x squared y plus 2xy. And we're going to do this in the direction of not just a vector, but we, we're going to do a, a curve, r of t equals 4t, t squared, at the point, um, let's do 8, 4 for our point, okay? So how do you deal with something like this, right? Um, this is going to be a little bit trickier. Um, so what you have here, right, like what does this curve look like? Well, this, um, let's see, y is, is t squared, x is more or less in terms of t. This is, it's a parabola, right, um, if you were going to graph this thing. So you've got, you've got this parabola, and you've got this point 8, 4 on your parabola. Let's mark that with a different color. Okay. And you want to calculate the derivative of your function at that point, but you want to know how, how it's changing in the direction of the curve. So here what you want to imagine is that your, your point is constrained to move back and forth along the curve, right? So you're just moving along the curve, and, and you want to understand how your function is, is changing at that point. Um, now, one way that you could handle this would be to turn this into a Calc 1 problem, right? You could, uh, you could take this parameterization, plug it into your function, get a function of t, and go from there. Uh, but the other thing you could do is you could say, well, what does it actually mean to be in the direction of the curve? Well, in the direction of the curve means along the tangent vector, right? r prime of t. So what's r prime? r prime of t is 4 to t, right? So r prime at, oh, and notice that this point here, this point is, is r of 2, right? So r prime at 2 is the vector for 4, okay? And, and so we can take that as our direction vector. That's the direction in which we want to take the derivative. Uh, we need the corresponding unit vector. U is going to be, um, well, what is it going to be? So this is parallel to the vector 1, 1. Maybe due to that is root 2. So we can do 1 over root 2 times 1, 1, right? So that's a unit vector in the direction of the curve at that point. Then we can go ahead and use this machinery, right? So the next thing we need is the gradient, gradient of f at x, y is equal to, what is it equal to? It's equal to uh, 2x, y, cos x, y, x times y, sorry, um, plus 2y. And then it's equal to x squared cos xy um, plus 2x. So gradient of f at 8, 4. So we plug in our values. The number is going to get a little bit big on us here. Um, 64 cos of 32. Why not? That sounds fun. Plus 8. And then we have 64 cos 32 um, plus, uh, oh, plus 16. Okay. And so now if you want, I'm going to maybe I'll skip the dot product. But if you wanted that der derivative in, in the direction of the curve at that point, well, the last step is just take the dot product of the gradient with the unit vector, and you get your answer. 
Uh, now, one thing that you might, uh, you might realize, if you want to kind of think about this for a while, is to realize that actually, if you're doing the derivative in the direction of a curve, um, yes, you can get the answer from the directional derivative formula, but actually what you're doing here is just chain rule, right? So this is a chain rule calculation. You're really just taking the derivative of f of r of t, taking the derivative with respect to t using the chain rule, um, and we know that this is exactly the sort of thing that you get out of the chain rule, right? Um, the only thing that's maybe a little bit different is, um, is the appearance of the unit vector there. Um, and, you know, there, there's, I guess there's something to think about there. Uh, what's the difference between this directional derivative and the one that you would get just using the chain rule? Well, the chain rule derivative is also accounting for sort of how fast your position is changing with respect to t as you move along that curve, right? So the chain rule is kind of accounting for the speed at which that point is moving along the curve, um, whereas the directional derivative does not. The directional derivative is just focusing on the direction at that point. Um, so there is a small difference between the two, um, but it's a fairly subtle one, and it more or less just comes down to the magnitude of this derivative here. 